Hello class, I'm going to begin today by talking about one point perspective, which is I think a good place to start when we're learning linear perspective. Um, now some of you might already be familiar with this, but I think one of the most important things to understand about perspective is that if we can just master some fundamental concepts, we're going to be able to build increasingly complex forms. So. I'm going to begin by establishing the horizon line. Let's see. All right. So my first step is to create just a simple line. Now the horizon line corresponds to your line of sight. In fact, as you can see, I've tried to line it up with my eyes just to kind of reinforce that point. Now, if I were to do a perspective drawing where the horizon line was obscured by hills or buildings, that would be fine, but I would still begin the drawing by establishing that flat, endless plane. Now, with one point perspective, we need to start just with a single point. And then we're gonna use that point to generate a whole space around it. You can think of the vanishing point as the center and like the crosshairs of a telescope. One point perspective is the perspective of facing directly into a space. Um, and one of the things that's important to remember about it is that when we have objects in one point perspective, they're facing us directly. So I'm just going to create a simple box and typically, you know, I'll just start with a single point, pull that point into a line and then extend that line into a rectangle. All right, so do I have a box? I do not. I just have a flat plane in this endless blank space. So now I'm going to go ahead and extend some points back to my vanishing point. Like so. So now instead of having a box, I just have an endless brick in space. So I need to make that form end. This is my own little world, so I can slice into that endless form wherever I want. Now it's a good habit to get into with linear perspective to erase unnecessary lines as we go. Um, if we're just building something as simple as a box, it's pretty clear to see what's actually part of our form. But once we start to create more complex forms like staircases, all those extra lines can become a little bit confusing. So I'm going to create another box a little bit closer to me. Now, as things move down from the horizon line, they are approaching me in space. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and build something right down here. Like so. Now, our next step is going to be to take these corners and again, pull that shape towards the vanishing point. Like 
And I think you can start to see how this one is approaching us spatially and this one's a little bit farther back. So what if I wanted to end this block where this one begins? Well, I just go down to the ground and I cut straight across. Right. So I'm slicing into my box. Now my boxes are sort of creeping towards me. Now what if I wanted to have a box that begins where this one ends? Well, I start from this bottom corner on the ground and I can go ahead and once again create a little block Now, I mentioned that the vanishing point is like the center of our telescope. And I think the more we begin to draw, the more that that becomes clear. Now, I'm going to draw another box up in the sky just to pull that point into focus. And you can really start to see how that space is coming towards us. Now, of course, I could use shading to enhance this space. Um, one thing that I like to do with shading to reinforce the forms within my drawing is to really think about the type of marks that I use. So, patching. I think is a really good way to create that sense of a flat plane. And I like to follow my lines towards All right, so I think we are hopefully getting the idea. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to, I could take these forms and put them together almost like Legos and create like a whole structure in here. Or I could take them and I could carve them into other things. Um, for instance, what if this up here were to become I don't know, like a flying car. I'm really bad at drawing cars. You're really going to have to use your imagination on this one. So that maybe more looks like an angry toaster, but that's fine. Maybe wheels will help. All right, so you get the idea. So that concludes our quick review of One Point Perspective. Thanks, guys.